So, uh, good evening and namaste to everyone. Uh, this is Sakshi from BioClues. BioClues. We have gathered here to discuss uh, a very interesting topic about uh, how women could inch forward during the post COVID times. As we came to know that during this pandemic, the productivity of women was very less compared to uh, men. So we have a very good panelist here, and I'm going to uh, introduce you all. The first one is uh, Dr. Urmila Kulkarni, ma'am. She's an information scientist from Savitri Bai Phule University. She's also an advisor of the uh, Women in Biology Forum. The second one is Dr. Anshu Bhardwaj, ma'am. Uh, she's a principal scientist from Imtech Chandigarh. And thank you so much, ma'am. You uh, you accept our uh, proposal in a very short time. For a, and the third one is a Dr. Aparna Banerjee. She's an assistant professor from Catholica del Mole University, uh, Chile. I, I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrong. The fourth one is Dr. Sylvia Vasquez. She's a researcher in the Institute Periono de Energia Nuclear, Peru. Welcome you all. Thank you. So, uh, thanks, thanks, Anshuma. So, uh, I have prepared few uh, questions, uh, which I will going to ask you all. So, the my first question on this, uh, uh, my first question is, how COVID times affected the productivity of, especially uh, mother scientists? How how could they become more productive? So, anyone? So, um, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, would you like to start with uh, you know question and answers uh, to the questions that you have prepared, or you would uh, sort of uh, you know invite panelists to sort of, you know, express their views? and uh, then take up the question and answers. But in the interest of everyone, it would be really nice that you could, uh, you know, read out your questions uh, in advance, all the questions that you have in mind, so that okay. we can address uh, these questions while they speak. And maybe roughly we can have five minutes for every panelist, uh, you know, to express their views. And we use 30, 35 minutes of our time or little more uh, extended if required for the discussions. I think that would be a good uh, format to take this meeting ahead. Okay, ma'am. So, uh, so shall I uh, in, in, means explain or uh, shall I question all the questions? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Yeah. So, I have prepared a few questions. That The Very first good. one is... How COVID times affected the productivity of women scientists, especially mm -hmm. the mothers scientists? How could they become more productive? Mm -hmm. The first one is then. the second one is what is your suggestions to the researchers who are seeking for a postdoc or a pursuing their PhD or pursuing uh, or seeking for some PhD? Mm -hmm. How can they focus more on their ongoing process or application and not let this pandemic affect their work? Right. The third one is uh, how can bioinformatics uh, fight against uh, during this COVID times? Since how can bioinformatics also the fight during COVID? Thanks. Ma'am? Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is the so, list of questions no, no. that you have, or uh, no, no, no. you have a couple of more questions? Yeah, 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 I have a couple of more. The fourth one is the demand for bioinformatics become even more important. So, how uh, how could women scientists breathe this field? Right. Basically, it's, uh, the panel is basically belongs to women scientists, so that's why this question is there. The yes. fourth one is uh, yet this pandemic has opened the door for more of research pro projects. So, what's your uh, recommendation to the, to the women scientists in the context of fundraising and uh, technical requests. Right. And the last one is how should women scientists prepare for the future? So these are my questions. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. And yes. uh, if uh, I take the privilege of uh, starting the discussion. 
uh, you know uh, this this pneumonia like uh, infectious disease appeared in november december in wuhan uh, which we call it and refer to as covid 19 soon uh, the positive agent sars-cov-2 was identified and you know the disease progress uh, across the stages uh, from being referred to an outbreak to epidemic to pandemic and then uh, you know what are the key uh, impacting factors when i started thinking about these key factors uh, what came to my mind first is is you know before uh, before and after this particular pandemic so before pandemic we re- clearly had compartments with respect to you know home front and the work front uh, but after the lockdown uh, of the pandemic uh, you know suddenly uh, the both merged and keeping compartments became difficult we started working from home you know that led to some chaos in the first phase of uh, lockdown uh, but soon i guess all of us settled with schedule and we could manage our time uh, better uh, of course uh, you know young ma'am. girls ma'am yeah. uh, sorry for interruption um, actually the there are some background noise so please uh, please i request to everyone please mute their uh... yeah i was also Hope. Yes, ma'am. Please, please yes. go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry for that. I was also thinking. Sorry for that. <laughs> no problem. No problem. So you know, uh, sooner or later, you know, we settled. Of course, you know, young uh, students, PhD students, and uh, the young researchers having you know small kids uh, had to uh, sort of uh, work a lot more uh, than somebody like me, uh, you know, who could or 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 you know senior uh, colleagues, uh, you know. who could uh, sort of come up to terms with the new working conditions uh, you know so the goal for all of us uh, was the same it was uh, to sort of uh, handle both uh, the the home front uh, and the work front with minimum disruptions i think that is what uh, all of us strive for and uh, what helped us was our resilience being women so that helped and we could uh, you know sort uh, to small or a larger extent these two domains and um, adapting in adversity uh, you know uh, was the mantra so that's how uh, we dealt with uh, this situation to you know smaller or larger extent when i think of you know my personal experience if you permit me to share it with everyone sure, then the biggest shift has come uh, with working from um, uh, you know office cabin to working from the kitchen table right uh, you know it was it was race against time cooking versus collaborations dishes versus discussions you know entertainment versus education preparations versus publications and public speaking and uh, you know webinars and so on and so forth so so uh, you know uh, so it was it was still i think that you know uh, more or less we have been managing but i consider ourselves as you know still a fortunate lot you know because uh, i think we had homes and we had work both when i think of those people who were homeless walking on the street and had no work i i just can't imagine uh, you know uh, the adversities of life uh, that uh, they faced maybe that's a topic uh, for social scientists to deliberate and uh, discuss um, uh, but you know uh, uh, with with these uh, these thoughts you know and with you approaching for this uh, normal versus new normal i thought of uh, you know for a moment deliberating up on what actually uh, the normal is so if you go by dictionary meaning then it's it's a usual typical expected state of being or a condition that one is used to uh, so, so as to say the comfort zone 
uh, and and then uh, you know it has it has worked uh, for most of us but when we think of a new normal that is working from home taking uh, care of uh, kids uh, when they have no school uh, no domestic help available uh, uh, and so on and so forth so uh, so the uh, 